Um, this video's topic is going to be about thermal radiation. Um, so uh, most objects in space actually emit all types of electromagnetic radiation and the amounts of each type of radiation they emit tell us the object's surface temperature. How electromagnetic radiation and matter interact further determines the physical properties of objects such as chemical compositions, masses, sizes, rotation, and motion through space. So we're going to look at black body radiation first. Okay. Uh, as you can see on the screen, this is a black body radiation spectrum. So the radiation emitted by an object depending on only on its temperature. As you can see here, the x-axis is the frequency. So um, as you go along the arrow direction, the frequency is getting bigger. And y-axis is the intensity. Okay? Intensity actually specifies the amount or strength of radiation at any point in space. Okay? So uh, stars, they behave like black body. So we can use black body curve to decide a star's temperature. And there are several, okay, so most of the uh, black body radiation looks like this shape, okay? So it covers all kinds of frequency range, but as you can see, there's a peak intensity here, which happens at some particular frequency here or some particular wavelength here. I hope you still remember the relationship between the frequency and wavelength uh, from last uh, class we when we talk about magne electromagnetic radiation spectrum the higher the frequency uh, the shorter the wavelength uh, the the light is okay so and then we're going to talk about how roughly we can use this curve to decide um, uh, an object's temperature okay sometime in the future when we go to the chapter, we're going to talk about stars. We're going to look at uh, the black body, black body radiation in more details. Um, so this is a temperature scale. I'm going to actually spend some time during the live session to talk about different temperature scales. But um, there are, you know, we are pretty familiar with Fahrenheit temperature scale. And there is Celsius scale, and then also there's a Kelvin scale. Kelvin scale is usually used in a scientific lab as well as in astronomy. Um, as I said, I'm going to talk in more details about these during a live session, so I'm going to leave that for now. And so, related to the black body radiation, there are some radiation laws. Uh, the first one says peak wavelength is inversely proportional to temperature. So what is peak wavelength? The peak wavelength, as you can see, all the black body radiation has the peak here, which has the highest intensity here. So at which wavelength you have the highest intensity, that corresponding wavelength is called peak wavelength. Okay as well as you can uh, corresponding to peak frequency here. Okay, So the first law says that the peak wavelength is inversely proportional to temperature. So in other words, from this black body radiation, actually we can tell the temperature. Uh, the first picture here, the temperature is 60 Kelvin. Um, the second temperature here is 600 Kelvin. Okay, The third temperature is 6,000 Kelvin and the last temperature is 60,000 Kelvin. As you can see, when the temperature is getting higher, the, the whole black body radiation curve actually is getting bigger. Okay, As well as the peak is moving, is shifting to the right, in this case, is shifting to the higher frequency range or lower wavelength range. So that's why we say that when the temperature is higher, the peak frequency is higher, but the peak wavelength actually is lower. So that's why we say the peak wavelength is inversely proportional to temperature. Okay. 
So, and also I said that, you know, the next thing we say that the total energy emitted is proportional to fourth power of temperature. Again, I'm not expecting you to be able to calculate anything using this equation, but I want you to understand the relationship between the total energy emitted as well as the temperature here, okay? So in other words, the total energy emitted is proportional, so this is a constant, proportional to fourth power of temperature. Again, this temperature has to be in Kelvin temperature scale. Uh, in other words, the temperature is higher, the energy is going to be much higher. So when the temperature is higher, we know the object is hotter. So, uh, and then the faster is uh, particles, they're going to move, and then the more energy uh, those objects, they're going to radiate. Okay, so those two laws actually coming back to this um, diagram here, you can see that again. So when the temperature is higher, okay, then the object is hotter. So the, you know, so you can see the energy emitted actually is bigger. So that's why you see these waves are becoming taller and bigger, okay? And then on the other hand, when the temperature is getting higher, the peak wavelength happens, okay? Inversely proportional to the temperature. So the peak wavelength actually is lower, but the peak frequency is higher.